I am unashamed. What about you? Welcome back to Unashamed. Um, I'm trying to get Missy on today, Jace, but she was busy preparing. You know, got a little oh, I know. travel coming up. Well, you probably should have asked me to <laughs> ask her. Because all I got was, I mean, babe, I can't. I can't do it. I was like, can't do what? <laughs> I had a feel. <laughs> so, it was well, kind of I mean, last second. I just I was working on our stuff for yesterday for today, and I just thought, you know, we hadn't had Missy. And actually, I watched what made me think about her, and I kind of want to get her take on it. So we'll have to get her on later. But you know, she had came. She had come on here. I don't know. It's been a few months ago, and talked about a an episode she had in a library. And it was kind of a remember all that, and so it was the Brave Books who does her books, and um, but I noticed this week they had another thing going on because it's kind of like a national story, and yeah. and it was the same people that were with her. I, I I saw some footage from it last night on the news. That's what made me think about Miss. I was wondering what she thought. And uh, Kirk Cameron was there. Riley Gaines was there. Kind of the same crew that was yeah. with her. I think she's out of it now. I mean, she she just. She probably wouldn't have known. Yeah, you know, I was but, in, I was interested, but they had it's kind of the same deal. It's like a bunch of people were going to show up, and so, which I kind of feel bad for these libraries because they're normally sitting there, and nobody's ever coming in there, and then all of a sudden somebody like this shows up, and a bunch of people want to come hear it, and then it becomes a big deal for them. And so they were in Alabama, so you know, first they said they couldn't do it, and then it was a lot of controversy, and then they did it, but it was a packed house. I noticed uh, Kirk was there. They were singing God Bless America. I mean, you know, it's just one of those deals that's kind of unfortunate, I guess. But I love Bray Books. I love what they're doing. Uh, they have some really cool books. Missy has them, but has one, but a bunch of people, uh, other people do as well. So, No, it's just, moving day for us, so uh, we're going to, we're headed to Nashville. It's our anniversary. Oh, that's so. right. Is yeah. this what is this one? Is 33 that? years. So the rest of this is bonus. So I was trying to take care of some responsibilities like normal people yesterday. Tried to get my dog in for a visit and that went over like a lead balloon. <laughs> well, it just seemed weird. I'm like well, Biggin's a roamer. He <laughs> Well, you can't drop your dog off. They're like, "Well, you have to be here." I was like, well, "I'll drop him off, and then I'll come by. Y'all, you know, give him his give him his shots and I'll come back and pick it." pick him up and it's like no you you have to you have to be beside him you know through the entire yeah, that, but they were talking real hush like we were you know talking about i don't know so <laughs> i was like well <laughs> i have to do that have when to i hold get, his paw huh, I have to do the, that when i get back well the I next thing i don't really care about you holding his paw during the it just proceeding. seemed weird you know but uh i was like it's a checkup he has no life-threatening disorder i'm just bringing him in but anyway we couldn't work that out you done any paw holding lately dad and <laughs> So the next item of business, I've been breaking the law for a couple of months because my inspection sticker's out. Oh, boy. And, and look, everywhere I go, where I used to get my inspection sticker, they're like, we don't do that anymore. Oh, I got like, the guy for you. Go ahead and change my oil, you know. Oh, no, I I know your guy. So I I uh, did the search on my on my phone, and there were four possibilities. So I picked the closest one. So I went down there, and I mean, this was this was Redneck Central, and I mean that affectionately. Is it the one right right there on Seventh Street? Oh yeah, oh yeah. They all knew. They said, "I we saw your brother." You know, oh, they yeah. had the twang. I couldn't understand half of what was being said. And <laughs> I, said, I have still the preaching twang. down there at that church. I said every Sunday, <laughs> but not really. It's not me. But no, they said you came in, yep. and I and uh. One they of them asked said, yeah, we got we got some of that preacher money. You know, they were kind of making fun of you at first. <laughs> I didn't know. I was like, well, I think he works there for free. So I'm not sure that was preacher money. <laughs> I ain't had any preacher money in a long time. So uh, one of the guys there looked like our Uncle Si. Yep. Your brother. That's the main guy. And he said, yeah, I get that a lot, you know. And he was kind of going off on a blankety blank, blankety blank, blank, blank. <laughs> And uh, he didn't do any of that with me. Oh, he was doing was it with me. Yeah. So he, uh, <laughs> so what did I ask him? I was like, That's funny that you went. How long you been married? And he said, Oh, I ain't married. And no, it's my girlfriend. Because somebody asked him why he was so upset. They're like, Well, he's having 
woman problems. That was how this started. <laughs> and I said, oh, well, how long have you been married? And he's like, no, I ain't married. You know, it's my girlfriend. He's like, I mean, she's playing games. And I said, how old are you? He said, I'm 78. I said, so you're still doing the dating thing, the playing the game? He's like, no, I'm not playing yet. I said, well, let me ask you a question. I said, how many times have you been married? He said, three times. I said, really? I said, have you ever considered, have you stopped and considered that maybe it was you? Because <laughs> I'm like, what? I'm, I'm giving them my money to change the oil, and he's already you know, said all this. And he said, oh, I know it was me on the first two, but that third one, that wasn't my fault. <laughs> I said, well, why don't you forgive, like, the first two, they're going to have to forgive you because you've already owned it. They know? call this oil change oh, counseling. So when, yeah. When y'all you got to solve it in the time of an oil change. I think it's so when y'all yeah. come to me and you say, you know, how come you don't go to town? <laughs> yeah. I, no, well, this has coming. a this has a happy ending. So, so now we're getting down into you know the problems, and because they listen to the podcast. So all uh, you went there for is what? Get my oil change and get well. I, I went there to get an inspection sticker, but I threw in the oil change out of the goodness of my heart since yeah. they were making a little money. Uh, this thing yeah. is branching out into marriage. Into marriage. There. Well, so then this guy... They're, that, they're kind of bored there, so they yeah. like a good so then the guy who who uh, who's, looks like Cy, all of a sudden, now uh, he said, now, 38 years ago, you know, the Lord saved me, because he said the first two, were, you know, it was this... He he drank too much, and, and among other He things. told me he had been there to hear me preach. That's what made oh, yeah. it weird. So... Uh, Anyway, so now all of a sudden it turned into a spiritual discussion. And so I said all that to say one of the guys who had the longest marriage tenure, he's like, well, how long have you been married? So I was like, 33 years. That's where I was going with yeah. this. He's like, 33 years? I mean, I didn't think you were like 40 years old. I thought, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> but... uh yeah, he said. Well, what is no the to get him a tip. what is the one quality? He put me on the spot here. He said, "What would you say?" He said, "Because I've been married seven years, and I I would I would like to be married for thirty three years." That's so good, I like to hear. What that. is the one quality? Would you say is the most important? And so, you know, off the top of my head, just point blank question, I just. Because I really hadn't thought about one quality. Because usually I'll say Jesus or yeah. he's a one quality. So I said, I would say unselfishness. And they were all like, do what? What? I was like, y you've too never, many, too you've many never heard the word unselfishness? <laughs> And he said, "Well, what do you mean by That's that?" Poor I just, yeah. I just thought it was crazy that when he, they were like, well, "What do you mean by that?" I was like unselfish. That means you wake up and you're not thinking about what you're going to get out of this. You're thinking about you know what you're going to give. You're being unselfish. You're thinking about the other That's person. Nice. That's a, I, that would probably be exactly. So, what so I was the saying. guy said, "Well, I'm not sure. Sure, I can do that." Yeah, <laughs> I thought. That's all right. Well, now wait a minute. It's like big. Big Lou, he's that, working on number concept, two. That <laughs> concept would go through the, the redneck world. And then, <laughs> I was know, just a lot of so, friction that would be stirred up from that. I was so shocked <laughs> that you asked me a question, I give you an answer, and now you're going to argue about it's like, it. I'm I don't like, know about well, all it. It was that. just like, wow, what a novel concept. You know, <laughs> it made me think of that show of my wife. Uh, Missy listens to she she loves to listen to that Doctor Laura. So every once in a while we'll be in the car together and and she'll have that on. And, yeah, uh, you know it's really not funny, but I think most people listen to it because it's humorous because she's so blunt. Because they're calling her up, she don't give a rip, and there's not like a religious undertone. I, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Doctor Laura is Jewish too. Well, I don't know, but let I me think tell you. she's Jewish. She's old school with her, like, she's, Jay's right. She's like, I listened to her years ago. It's been a she few throws years. haymakers. Yeah. Because these people, you know what happens. Anybody's been involved in marriage counseling or whatever. You, These people, they'll call in. They're like, oh, he's always been the prop. You know, we. He never does like, this. He never has. I mean, yeah. it's just been. Always and never. A history of, they'll, they'll lay out this. 
this whole argument, and you're thinking, boy, this this poor girl, I mean, the guy she's married to must be the biggest loser of all time. Then this Dr. Lara, Lara she'll say, well, how many kids do you have? And they're like, well, you know, four, four kids or whatever. And she's like, so let me get this right. He's been the problem the whole time, and then you decided to bring other humans into this so-called toxic environment where they can experience the same, you know, and she just, get, well, then then the woman's like, she don't know what to say. Because it's like, because what happens is, is there's a narrative that she spun so long that when you stop and think about it, it doesn't really make sense. No, at one time, you, you were getting along just fine, you know. <laughs> But now it's just snowballed in your mind. There's stuff like that, which is kind of comical, because then they start backtracking, you know. She's like, well, how long did y'all date before you got married? And they're like, you know, a month or whatever. Yeah. And she's like, well, no wonder you had to me. I mean, you couldn't wait and make sure this was the it, – it's just she calls them out on all kind of stuff. And, like, bringing up what I brought up, like being unselfish. And yeah. they're like, whoa. I'm not gonna be unselfish to this loser, you know. It's it's too far gone at that point. But so anyway, it was kind of marriage counseling 101 at the uh, oil change place, which I thought was interesting. Yeah, that's a that's you're on a time limit there because you got to get it done by the time the oil change and the inspection sticker are done. So well, no, because I look, I came right before closing time. They actually closed the door behind me. Oh, they okay. fixed the clothes. Yeah. So, so you then got, it was you just, a little bonus. They thing. all gathered up. Well, it's seven or eight of them. We had marriage one on one yesterday. But I thought well, I'll, I can't I'll wait be to go back because I liked them. I well, I like. Oh, they're good guys. Yeah, I want to hear the follow up. Marriage counseling. Yeah. Oh, and he uh, they are as redneck as you're going to get. Did you notice? And maybe you didn't because if they had closed the bays, but like right in front when you're getting you're in the thing sitting in your vehicle, typically. And right out front, there's all these vehicles out here and stuff they've been working on. And the light, you know, there was like travel well, trailers. The, you can't be a redneck unless you assemble <laughs> a certain amount of junk. That just kind of comes and along. It's just like all there. You, this true. guy's been there for a few years. Oh, Phil, when you cross that railroad track coming to your house, it is like the world's greatest collection of junk cars. Yeah, that's right. Well, yesterday a redneck, the local redneck, uh, came to see me, and after that was the Mac Owen, it actually did this. So this was about a thirty-year boat dock. So I, it's made on cypress logs. Yeah, put some little space in it. Matt, Mac Owens put put a some pipe, two inch pipe and tin. So I'd be a la. There's a. So you got a boathouse floating on cypress log. It was. It was. But now it is that last wind we got. <laughs> I, I could see it was going. Yeah. But I could see so the whole thing collapsed. With my boat and motor in it, so it was just steel and tin that all collapsed on top of the boat and motor. Yeah. So as luck, as luck would have it, a local redneck came down there, and I, I mentioned a crisp twenty dollar bill. <laughs> I said, "You, it's what's in it's for you." I said, "Go down there and get all that tin and pipe off my boat and motor." And see if it'll run. For a whole twenty dollars. So, I can't believe he agreed. He took Phil, off. He Phil, took off. Inflation like, has gone up. I would have <laughs> would twenty doesn't go. I would have offered a hundred for that minimum. No, I done had a here lately, you know. <laughs> yeah. Paying more money than, than it's worth. Good grief. So I just said, Well, if you'll do this for <laughs> twenty bucks. Twenty. So he went out and I said, Yeah, ain't no problem. He, so he went up and got him some kind of cutter cut a big square in the tin that was crumpled. It was all over my Did boat. you let him take the metal with him? Because he probably sold that. So he, he got rid of that. But that, he, he come up right back up there. He says, boat, mo, boat motor out from under the dock. So that so was. now the, you no longer have a boat. It was the passing, ever. the passing of an era. Yeah. It's been, that, that old boathouse has been there a long time. So when we were kids, um, you know, you learn by a lot of different means, you know, in our case, Jace, we lived out in the middle of 
nowhere, so to speak, but it was somewhere for us. So we explored, we had adventures, uh, maybe even a little mischief uh, here and there. Uh, they say that a child's morality is ingrained by the age of 10. So what you put in there at an early age is going to make a huge difference. And um, we have a brand new sponsor that I'm super excited about. It's called Brave Books, and they target uh, children 4 to 10. And Jace, your wife, Missy, uh, has written a book uh, that's in the Brave Book family because you're my family. She did. And I actually read it, and I I got a little uh, misty-eyed. It was there really, go. really good. Yeah. Trust me, if my wife's involved, I endorse that because she <laughs> has a high bar. Well, there's a lot of people that you'll recognize that have written books. It's They're really great. And it's really a, it's kind of a book club because they're going to send you a picture book every month. It's going to come right to your doorstep. It's going to teach your kids traditional values. All these are written by pro-God, pro-American authors, and our own, our very own, Missy Robertson is one uh, that contributed as well. So once you check them out, equip your kids and your grandkids with these fun books that teach the truth that we so desperately need to hear in our country. Subscribe to get a new book delivered right to your doorstep every month with the Freedom Island Book Club at bravebooks.com. And you'll get Brave's newest book free when you sign up. Use the code UNASHAMED to get 20% off your subscription. That's bravebooks.com. Use the code UNASHAMED for a free book and 20% off your subscription to the Freedom Island Book Club. Check them out. Years and years and years of wear and tear. I could see it going. I said, there, go. Let her sit there till it collapses. So Willie has a nice boathouse just down from him. Are you going to be able to use put your boat under yep. here? Yep. Okay, I'm just good. going upgrading. Just move down a little bit. That's good. And that reminded me of a story when you said that about it falling on your boat. A few years ago when I was living out in Calhoun, our house hadn't been built long, but less than a year. And when we built it, it was a carport, but they called it a porta cache you know, fancy French name because it's not actually, it's, it's freestanding. So it's, it's got, you know, some two by fours that are holding it up and it's t attached to the house. And when Tony built it, he said, I don't know. Al. He said, boy, he said, this thing will take a lot, but if we, boy, if we had a tornado or something, this, this thing would probably just blow away. But we talked about it and decided to just let it go. Well, a straight line wind came through that year, just a straight liner, 70 mile an hour wind. It's not a tornado. It's just a wind that comes through, and you can look above it, you know, and see where it takes trees, everything else. That thing came along, picked up that whole carport, moved it about three or four feet. Well, of course, then it's off its feet, and it just came right down on top of my truck. And old little B, who we talked about when Burley was on, he, had got, he was on the interstate, saw that wind come, and ran into my house for safety, huh. <laughs> pulled underneath there. So he's got a running car sitting next to my truck and that carport just collapsed right on top of both of them and just broke up, you know, just like this, just like it pinned them Ooh. in. And so we had, <laughs> we had to get out there and pull it off of there and all well, that. Well, it's a hundred degrees every day down It cost here. me more than a crisp my 20. Boat house, my boathouse is no more. Yep, it's gone. Passing of an error because I won't rebuild it. No. But it's pretty ingenious. It lasted that long. I mean, over 30 years. Oh, yeah. Just logs with, with a... Well, just think if we'd have had that back in the day and we were fishing, because we had to go down and bail the boats out every time yep. we went to fish, because it always rained in them, remember? That's right. Or if there was a big rain, we'd be out there sometimes in the night doing yep. it. So, passing of an era. Yep. Jason, I was going to read this before we get into our text. The, when you mentioned that about the always and nevers, first of all, on your unselfish thing, if you ever need a verse to go with that, because I use that a lot too, it's Philippians 2, 1 through 3 is a great text about living your life, not for your own interest, but the interest of another person. And of course, that's written to the church, but man, what a what a thing it speaks to living an unselfish life. It's difficult to do. It's hard to do. Of course it is. <laughs> but you know what he, what he caps that with in verse 5 in Philippians 2? He says, have the same attitude as that of Christ Jesus. Which really goes to where we're at in Luke. You only, you can only be good to those who are not good to you. If you're looking at it through how Jesus rescued all of humanity, right. including ourselves. I mean, that is the dynamic 
God chose to pass this along. Right. I mean, because people say, oh, yeah, you know, you ought to you ought to help those in need. Well, it's easy when you like the person or you feel like they've done nothing to deserve whatever mm-hmm. condition they're in. But you, you start getting into the world and having compassion. You need some better motivation and a model, which is what he did in Philippians. You know, he started off, this is a good verse, when it said, do nothing out of selfish, selfish ambition, ambition yeah. or vain conceit. And listen to this. But in humility, consider each other's better than yourself. And that's just what you tell those guys. You shouldn't look to your own interest, but also to the interests of others. You know, then it launches into Jesus. And you just think about it. You can't do that with your wife. Well, so how are you going to do it with anybody? You're sure not going to do it with your enemy. No. <laughs> I mean, that's just the underlying, underlying amazing part of Philippians Philippians 1 4, you, I thank you really for your partnership in the gospel from the first day into now. That's one. Two, go out, I'm in chains and defending and confirming the gospel. All of you, same at two. Three, uh, what, we, what you're doing is really helping advance the gospel. That's, that's three. Four, the latter do so in love so that I'm put here for the defense of the gospel. That's five. At verse 18, what does it matter? The important thing is that in every way, everything, whether from false motives or true, Christ is preached. And because of this, I rejoice. That's one, two, three, four, five times mentioned the gospel in the first chapter. Whatever happens, verse 27, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Well, there's that one. Then the next one, you stand firm in the spirit, contending as one man for the faith of the gospel. Look, you start reading through that thing on what sharing Jesus means, starting with the prayer that you quoted, you look at that, it's amazing how many times. I I see just from one page in chapter two, you know, Timothy has proved faithful because as a man with his his father, he served with me, kind of like a dad complex thing, in the work of the gospel. So it's amazing just in the book of Philippians 1, 2, that's seven times and you don't have to turn a page. You just got chapter one and two, then you just look at it. You say their whole life was built around Jesus, him dying, being buried and raised from the dead. They're, they're, they're everything they did. Yeah. I mean, it was just, just like this. It's, I mean, just read Philippians, you say, boy, it's hard to do without any kind of prayer in there. Yeah. You know? Philippians is such a good book. Yep. We need to do that one sometime. I don't think we've done that on the podcast. And one more thing I want to mention before we move on from that, because Jace sparked a lot of my mind talking about marriage, because Lisa and I have done a lot of marriage ministry through the years. When I hear a couple, back in the old days, we used to do a lot more counseling with couples. They would be, they'd be, you know, they come in, they're giving you all their problems. You know, they're, here's where, here's where we're at. And I would always hear, always, that always and never. Mm-hmm. She always does this. She always does, He never does this. He never does that. And I love going over to 1 Corinthians 13 because I usually say, man, I, I'm hearing a lot of always and never out of you two guys. It, it sounds like y'all are locked into an eternal battle. I said, let me read you something. See, see if this compares to your lives and kind of what's going on. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. That proves that most people have a love problem. When they <laughs> it's have a love a, problem. When they have a problem. And I, and I say, if we could use always and never in those terms instead of what you guys are, if you, you know, are so locked in on that. I like, love you has taken on new meaning. Yeah. And they forget that. Jace is right. Or Dr. Laura, I guess, was right. They forget what brought them together to start with. Yeah. You, you just get so much garbage in that you forget. And sometimes you just got to reset to the simple, you know. So, Well, that's what I, I even think you see that, you know, when we were talking about the parable of the good Samaritan. You know, when he asked, who is my neighbor, which once again, 
that's usually the alternative to a bad marriage situation. They're like, well, this, you know, it's, it's, it's this person I'm with, and the grass is always greener. And so then you see. Verse two was good, good, but number three. <laughs> but you see this when people have marital problems. You know, all of a sudden, I mean, it doesn't matter. The husband or the wife, they they start working out and eating right and After you know, the look, fifth dr- one. dressing up and looking. But then you're like, well, if you'd have been doing this to get your husband or your wife's attention, you wouldn't even be in this mess. You know, it, it, it's like all of a sudden, once there's an alternative that doesn't involve them, they start making all these changes. And exactly. I'm discussing with them, and I have to, if if they're up to five different marriages and then we didn't work out and then we're there on number five. Usually it's when I say, you know, after five that you've been married to and the one you just married, uh, it, it it's possible that it could be you. <laughs> yeah. you. You could even start early. I think Judge is right. I think once we get really the three. Too, well, I was kind of, I wasn't sure where this conversation was going but you know i was being, people, i was being kind of playful but then it got serious you know then yeah. they were really asking for advice but so i was kind of kidding because i thought he's 78 i just assumed he was married but it was more turning into our other samaritan you know yeah. altercation at the well that's what it reminded me of yeah because it's like once we started talking it's like, no, I've had three wives, and the one I'm with now is, is not, not my, my wife, wife. Right. and it's a mess. And I'm like, boy, you're 78. You're getting a little old to be still in that that race. And he's like, tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Dad, you're almost, you know, you're you're right there. Can you imagine game playing and, you know, I can't have imagine a girlfriend it, it, show it, up, girlfriend and, shows up, and mm. say you don't love me anymore, and you know whatever. I look at some of them last, some of them stunts I pulled in my last one, and the only one I've been married to is Miss K, but just just one, it can cause you a lot of misery. I can't imagine five. No, me neither. It's best to work it out. Let's take another break. But when it happens, we should be there to say, look. I mean, did you get yourself into it? There is a way out of it. Absolutely, you know, and it's way better to 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 make it work. You know, the Lord's uh, prayer pretty well, pretty well covered it. It does. I mean, it does. This section we're talking about is is everything that we've been talking about applies into marriage. That's the beautiful thing about it. The Bible, you know, Jesus wasn't even married, and neither yeah. was Paul. And, and most of the Bible's written by them or about them, and yet. The principles they lay out for the for yep. the the Christian walk, it works for marriage. I mean, I guarantee you that. Oh, oh yeah. Huge, huge well, marriage. I've always looked at it like he's not married because he would be. We would be the bride of Christ, you right? Know? He, we yeah. were his wife in the sense that. Yeah, sense. I, I believe that. Oh, I know? think there's nothing and, about it. And so, what I was going to say though is, when you look at this, when we're reading the Samaritan story, you know the the priest and the Levite that came by i mean you really you think well why did why did jesus use them as an example and why didn't they help him and you start to realize that this cost that they started talking about in chapter nine when you know the people would come up and say i'll follow you wherever you go and i mean you start looking at at who is your neighbor asking questions like that you know, when is the right time to help people? These are the things religious people do, you know, because you don't want to put yourself out there if it's going to cost you a whole, whole lot or it's mm-hmm. dangerous. Or But Jesus is the one who came up with the story. He he made it. It's a parable, but it's it's really about a real place where people were being robbed and it's real people. There's re, There's real hatred even to this day among Samaritans and Jews. And so when you think about what Jesus is saying, it's like you're not you're not going to be able to do this unless you're willing for it to cost you something. You right. know, your pride, uh, and then even the money that the guy spent, you know, the hero here, the Samaritan. With no, he didn't do it with any idea and inkling that he would ever get that back. Oh, that's right. It wasn't like 
I'm loaning you this money to take care. I mean, he just did it to take care of the guy. So there's no what, expectation that's my of point. payment. You're like, how much is it going to cost me to love my neighbor? It's not just who is my neighbor. All these questions come up. How much is it going to cost me to love my neighbor? Yeah. Or uh, when is the right time? I mean, we come up with that stuff because we really, it's just a lot easier to just get on the other side of the road and act like it never happened. So I hope, I hope it works. I'll pray for you. So <laughs> or I don't want to get tangled up in that. Well, right. That's what I'm saying. A lot of times when somebody says, I'll pray for you, that's code for I don't want to get involved. Yeah. But, right. oh, I mean, it's unfortunate, but it's true. It's true. Yeah. We've, uh, Lisa and I have helped people before, a lot of times sent people to maybe a, one of these marriage ER, like Joe Beam, we had him on the podcast, like he does, like a weekend. And, you know, they got to, you got to pay for that being done, but a couple sometimes in crisis. And so they just don't have the money to get there, but they want to do the right thing. And so we've helped them before. And afterwards they come back and say, well, we want to pay you guys back and start a payment plan, whatever. And I said, no, um, I didn't give you that to be paid back, Yep. but I want you to pay that forward because if you heal one day, somebody's going to come to you and say, Hey, y'all got a great marriage. I need help. And you know what you'll say? I know some people I can get you to. And if you pay it all forward, instead of worry about paying people back, yeah, then they help other people. That's kind of, I mean, to me, that's a big principle of what he's talking about. This Samaritan got it. But you know, it's interesting, Jess, you're right. I don't know that he picked the, the Levite and the priest, and we didn't get into it too much when we talked about that. The priest, from a Jewish standpoint, was probably the most spiritual connection they had because he offered sacrifices. The Levi, the Levite uh, tribe was set aside just to do work in the temple. So the the Levite in this story is kind of imagine like a like a junior priest. They're doing all the just the you know stuff that has to be done in the temple, the animals calling off the carcasses, you know that that kind of work. But these two guys would have been seen as as spiritual because it connected them to the temple. But you know from this story that doesn't make you spiritual at all. Because you can just walk by and then cross the other side of the road and just keep on going. Yep. I mean, so I, I do think it's for people that view our church experience in the 21st century, that you're going to the temple on Sunday and you're offering up your tithes of worship to the Almighty and then you leave and go and that's what you just did to be spiritual. If you've got that mindset, you're going to be just like these two guys. Yeah, I think that's what Jesus was after. Yeah, I think he, he was looking it. for grace motivated. That's right. You know, uh, Catholicism you know. has a little, little, little nest where you go in and sit down, and one of the one of the priests he sits down over there and he listens to you. Your confessional, yeah, yeah, yeah. Booth. Which it's a pretty good idea. It's a great idea, and but you can yeah, do but that. We any- tend to do it without the. But Jace and- did it at the oil change place yesterday. <laughs> yeah, I mean. I'm not even sure how we That's got. the difference right there. <laughs> I'm saying, right. I mean, he, he, Jay's story proved what we're talking about here, that you can have a confessional while you're getting your inspections done. Very much so. That, that becomes the booth, you know? That yeah, be- it was a very spiritual conversation. It was long, you know? It's, yeah. It was, I think I was making their work slower because they were standing there talking. Because finally I said, well, I, th- I think I need to pay somebody. <laughs> And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, they hadn't even had it written up because we were just sitting around talking. I mean, I was kind of like, <laughs> probably are, are the, we done? The, the, if individuals went out and do what Catholicism did with one person, you know, you go over to see some guy, you know, some priest. But uh, I think the way this is just everyday events, things that happen, you can – Kind of prove who you are and who you're not, that's for sure. I think it's the best way to live. And I think it was the whole point Jesus is trying to make because you had this expert in the law member that was coming in with this premise. And Jesus was like, no, you missed it. Yeah. You missed the whole deal. Let's take another break. So it comes out that mercy became the thing. Um, and I think Jace is right. I think that particular story leads to the love your neighbor, you know, who is my neighbor. Then I think we got into the story on the last podcast with Lisa was on about Mary and Martha, which kind of hits that first aspect. The more I've thought about it, the more I think you're right about being all in on, on who God is. 
Mm. You know, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. That this is sort of an illustrative story of these two women. One of them doing good things, opening her house up, having an opportunity for Jesus, but then really not. She was dragged away by her worries and her, you know, all the stuff we talked about on the podcast. Whereas Mary was all in on just listening, mm-hmm. learning, you know, who Jesus was. So I do think there's something to that that leads us into the into the prayer conversation. Yeah, wherever. it does because I think Jesus is really identifying what you think you need versus what he knows you need, mm-hmm. which is why when he did get to the explanation of prayer and we get to the end, which Phil read in the last podcast, when he says in verse 13, if you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? So that was right after he said, Verse 11, which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? So this is this comes down to trust. I mean, and, and this is a classic example. I mean, Martha was passionate. I think she thought she was, she was doing the right thing and Mary should be helping her. Yeah. But... You know, I think that's when it comes to prayer. If you think that you're in control, which Martha obviously did, that that may be a recipe for for a, the need for a heart change right there. Right. Because you think about it, she's putting her value in that. But in in essence, this whole thing is about us humbling ourselves before the Lord and Him supplying the power. Just right. think of all the verses to the churches. You know, the the power. It's in jars of clay to show that it's the power from God, not us. So when you think you're in control and the more busy you are, that's somehow how you get your value. And because that's what happens. You feel like, Oh, I'm doing good. Look at, look at, look at what I've done. I'm making right decisions. And somewhere in there, Jesus is saying that's too, you're, you're putting your emphasis on what you can do way too much. You're too busy being you. And then asking God to assist you with your plans and your agenda instead of the opposite. So, I mean, it, it's a really profound movie. It was very convicting to me the more I got into this. Yeah. Because we all get busy thinking, hey, we're doing this, we're doing this, we're doing this. And he's like, oh, you're forgetting. Sometimes you you have to have that humble spirit. Right. And I think you see that even in the prayer and he tells us how to pray, but then he really addresses kind of your attitude as you pray. And it's got to be submissive, you know, especially when you read like things like not your, not my will, but your will be done. Uh, and just, and just the way the prayer works as far as the childlike spirit, you know, it's forgive us and, and, uh, for we, lead us not into temptation. It's not a selfish thing. Right. It's a prayer of, it's like a bunch of children praying to their father who, you know, and, and I made that analogy on the last podcast. I think that's really when you're getting into that because they're, they tend to be more trusting. They don't, they're not as bitter. Right. They tend to be, uh, they're not prejudiced at all. I mean, they don't have agendas. It's like once we get older, we come up with all these really bad qualities. Mm -hmm. But in your relationship with God, what he's trying to say, and you see that Mary and Martha, you're going to have to get that from me. Right. And I think that's the more difficult part. I think submissive is the word that comes to my mind when you said that, because you're right. He brings out this concept of father here, and we're going to see this all throughout the Gospels. And it's kind of an odd... If you think about it, like you're, because t- he mentions, you know, being he is God, he was with God in the beginning, and we know thinking about the Godhead that Jesus and God's not like he's a lesser God, because this there's been a lot of false heresy come in that somehow Jesus really wasn't God. He, you know, he couldn't have become flesh and become one of us and be God, but he did. He is, and so he views his relationship with the father as a father 
And so that, but that, that trips people up, Jace, because, you know, they're just like, well, how, how, how does that work? I mean, how do you, how are you equal to a father and yet willing to submit to him? As, as well, he I think he's introducing the idea that this is going to function as a family. I do too. So, so like if you read from Ephesians 3, when Paul wrote the Ephesians, I think this was the same concept he was trying to get across. So in verse 14, it says, for this reason, of course, he's talking about Jesus reconciling the world and bringing Jew and Gentile together under one roof at the foot of the cross, kind of the same message that Jesus is showing by having an illustration about the Samaritan other Gentiles up to this point, or what do you call the untouchables? Yep. So then he says, from whom, verse 15, Ephesians 3, the whole family in heaven and on earth derives its name. Yep. And so all of a sudden we're talking about a forever family, a spiritual family. And even even in that prayer, when he was talking about... Uh, in, in Matthew's version, heaven and earth coming together. Because really, heaven, for the first time, through the kingdom of God on earth, is being introduced to earth. You right, know? It, right. that You can be part of a forever family, even though you have a physical family right. on, on earth, which is what he is referring to when he says, you know, who is my, who is my mom and my brothers, which we had read earlier. Yeah, and he uses that same same reference throughout the prayer, too. Let's take our last prayer. So then Paul says, verse 16, I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, which sounds a lot like the prayer that he, that he just mm-hmm. went through, saying, I'm going to give you what you ask, which we'll get into that next podcast, but it's, he's like, I'll give you the Holy Spirit, which is way more than whatever you think you want, yep. or kind of like the Martha situation. The fruit of the Holy Spirit, and you start listing all the qualities of that. Well, this is, this is abounding what he's going to give you. So then he says, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, which is why I said you, you only get a handle on these types of radical behavior of, of loving your enemies and helping people out no matter what the circumstances are, or no matter what you get out of it, but you get that from Christ, it, the example. So then he says, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, and, and I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and how high and deep is the love of Christ, which is what we're trying to grasp, which is what Mary was trying to grasp at that's why she was at his feet right and to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of god and this is where i was trying to get to so now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine which is really what our prayer lives should be Mm -hmm. According to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory. I mean, I just think it's a good practical example about we should be asking, knocking, imagining, but it's all done through his eyes and based on the response of his love for us. I mean, that that's the picture he's giving. I mean, there's a marked difference, a marked difference. If you watch the family structure and the dad was a solid Son of God, but but the 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 mother is not. Then you have the kids coming up. There's a big difference. And then you say, well, what if it was turned around? The wife, the woman, was a daughter of God, but the husband was not. There is a difference. Yep. When you observe observe that. Yep. I mean, there is a difference between them. Right. It's a pretty clear difference. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. And what's interesting, Dad, is that the impact it has on the ch- on the children, right. one way or the other, right. but not good if if the mom and dad are not prayerful, right, brother. Sister, well, what happens is kingdom so, loving. So people a lot of times don't have any example; they've never seen what we're describing in their own that home. That is correct. So then they hear about Jesus, and they hear about him talking about father and family, 
and they see that and they think, well, man, that seems pretty good, but why, why was mine so crappy and bad? But if you think about it, it, it's, it's, it's a perfect illustration. If you see somebody that has submitted their lives to God and they're trying to lead their family that way, it seems like a better structure. Oh, and but if you haven't seen that, then you should want a better structure. I mean, like, there's no reason to say, well, you know what, that just seems too good to be true. So I'm just going to live a crappy life and do it for generation. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> the alternative of that choice seems like such a bad idea. Oh. I get it that it's not easy because you hadn't seen it, but it, when you do see it, it should. If make you, you see the it. ones who come out of the world, and they don't go back to it. Yeah. They, they 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 look at these verses, and they fulfill them. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just a lot better family unit. Al, I'm sorry, it, it just, is. It's a way better way to roll. Some people, when they're traveling down this road, they're kind of in and they're out, and they have some yeah. good years and some bad years. We had the opportunity to see a stark change because of you and mom, and so we just literally saw like the bad highway and the good highway, just like that. Although you're not perfect. But you made such and it a— It didn't take rocket scientists as young bucks to, to look oh, around we, and we say, this is quick. the best route. It's the best route. And even though it took you know me a while to get there, I, I mean, I know now. I know that's the way to go. So when I look at my children now and my grandchildren, I mean, my oldest grandchild is in a relationship that one day could be another marriage. Yeah. You're a great-granddaughter. Yeah. And when I look at that and I see that, I'm thinking, we have to— continue this on in their lives. They have to see that and they have to know that. I mean, four generations. And, and there's two family structures in the mix. That's right. I mean, one on her side, the granddaughter, and then yep. the one on the, but That's fortunately right. for you, he's a son of God. All these are, we're working together. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we had a powwow it's together. A, it's a tedious, tough, it better observe what's going on. That's right. It's pretty tough, Al. No, it is tough because we're fighting an enemy that is out to destroy I think this. Jesus is laying out the toughness of it. He is. There's no you doubt know, about it. You yeah. know, it's not that simple. Right. It's not. I mean, Jace read that prayer. Paul's prayer in Ephesians 3 is one of the best prayers in the whole Bible. There's several great ones, but yep. that's one of the best because it strives for, when you're talking about what you imagine, to me, that strives for excellence. That, I mean, because I can imagine a lot of stuff. Well, we started this off talking about marriage, you know, and that he's going to get to talking about our marriage responsibilities and our roles and our family and our physical family, but he, it's always a mirror to, you know, I love that in Ephesians where he says, I mean, you, yes, you should do this, but I'm talking about you and Christ, us being married as, as yeah. to, to Jesus. So, And that's why you see us be hypocritical as human beings. Because I've had people say, and we all see this as marriages drift apart, and all of a sudden, you know, one of the those married, they start pursuing other interests. Because they feel like, this this marriage that they've been in is suppressing them and keeping them down, and they want to be able to do all that's imaginable or all that's possible. So I always ask that because I'm like, well, you know, what are you going to do if this this does end? And they're like, they're so full of hope, even though this is a disaster for their kids, and because they're like, oh, well, the the possibilities are endless, and all of a sudden you're you find yourself reminding them, well, isn't God, I mean, in one breath, God's the God of possible as long as it fits what you want to do. That's right. But well, wouldn't it be possible for him to heal this marriage? Aren't there enough conversions in the Bible where you've seen people, including, you know, from murderers to adulterers to, hadn't you seen God, you know, turn this around and, but they're not thinking of it that way. Right. It's only possible as long as I'm getting what I've decided to do. And I I'll to pray have. to God to help me along the way. So really, that's where you got to stop and think. Am I praying just for God to help me with my agenda? Because that's what Martha was really doing. Yep. She was like, get her. She's not helping me. She made her case, and she was convinced she was right. And he was like, you missed the most important part of this. That's exactly right. It's not about you. It should have been about me and my agenda. But you don't know what it is because you're too busy 
to even listen. That's right. And it comes back to that listening. Look, that, that transfiguration when they were up there and God said that, when he said listen to him, that sounds easy. But it's just very difficult on a day-to-day basis for us to stop and listen. We talked about that Greek word for she was distracted, which the Greek word actually meant she was dragged away. You think about dragged away? Dragged away from what? From Jesus, from listening to what he was saying. And he had broken the cultural norm by having been, having say, oh, yeah, you, you said I'll teach you as a woman like I would any man. I mean, he broke the cultural norm. Yep. So, But instead of her accepting that like Mary did, she was like, no, tell, please tell her to get back in here in the kitchen where she belongs. <laughs> but Jesus is like, no, she's chosen the right thing. And you should too because you're worried about too much. So it really is a good chiding of that. So, so you mentioned Jace, um, Ephesians three, which is such a good prayer. Uh, before we get into the what, what is called the Lord's Prayer, which actually probably a better description is the disciples' prayer because it was aimed at them. Um, I want to read a prayer to you that is meaningful to Lisa and I. That from in the Book of Psalms, but there's so many uh, if prayers we could pray that would make an impact. So I'm gonna do that in the overtime. If you want to follow us over and hear about that, blazetv.com slash unashamed is where you can get our overtime content. So we'll see you there. Thanks for listening to the Unashamed Podcast. Help us out by rating us on iTunes. And don't miss an episode by subscribing on YouTube. And be sure to click that little bell to get notified about new episodes. And for even more content that you won't get anywhere else, subscribe to Blaze TV at blazetv.com slash unashamed.